What is she doing? She's looking at our look. No, <laughs> it's much more than that. She looks the same to me. Overlay and compare. See, Riley then, Riley now, Riley then, Riley now. <gasps> so it's so oh, obvious. But what does it mean? She knows we're hiding something. I gave them tutorials on the facial musculature. There are 30 muscles, muscles under the surface of the skin that combine in different ways to, to express emotion. And that's what this is about, is like, does, does, you know, the little subtle movements of the young girl's facial muscles, the corrugator moving up and down, which would come with sort of judgment versus sympathy. Um, and that's what disgust does in the scene. It slows it down like scientists do, yeah, figures out what the meaning of those right. subtle microexpressions is. Right there. So? She's hiding something. But what? Hi, I'm Dacher Keltner. I'm a professor of psychology at UC Berkeley. I've been teaching human emotion at this university for 28 years, I think. Uh, I run a lab, the Berkeley Social Interaction Lab, faculty director of the Greater Good Science Center, and do a lot of research on awe, which I summarized in a recent book. And one of the greatest joys is, has been to work with Pete Doctor and the Inside Out team as a scientific consultant for Inside Out and In Soul, and then more recently, Inside Out 2, which came out this summer. And this is Academic Review, and I'm here to talk about the real science behind Inside Out and Inside Out 2. This is a terrific scene uh, from Inside Out 2 when um, anxiety is taking control of the imagination of Riley as she's trying to sleep and waking her up with anxious thoughts. More like that. Oh no, they're using Riley's imagination against her. Val and her friends like us now, but if we don't make the team, will they like us tomorrow? Okay, let's go to number three. Rhea and Grace's team win and we look stupid. Uh, number 22, Val passes to us and we <gasps> miss it. Uh, we can't let her do this to Riley. We have to shut this down. Love it, 37. Riley hits the puck into her own net. Why are you drawing a hippo? I'm not, <laughs> I, this, I'm drawing Riley. Joy, you forgot her ponytail. Oh, I love her ponytail, yes. Riley scores and everyone hugs her? 81, that is not helping. Riley paints her nails to match her jersey. Everybody copies her and she is so cool. Riley wears knee pads. We buy flowers for the losing team. <laughs> what? I can't always be the rage guy. No, no, I liked it. And this scene in particular really touches upon three key scientific insights from the science of emotion. The first really begins with Inside Out, which is why joy? Why is joy kind of the central character? Um, there are five emotions in Inside Out, nine in Inside Out 2. And that really draws upon a science, which is that uh, it's called temperament. Young people come into the world given their genetics and their family history and their attachment patterns and their culture. And they have an emotion profile that is organized and centered upon one or a couple of emotions. And Pete Doctor and the team really thought they wanted joy to be the kind of the guiding emotion. And she is, right? She's mainly controlling the panel and guiding thought and so forth. And she's the central emotion in both films. And that's how we are as people. We have these defining emotions that guide our lives. The second big idea that this scene is one of my favorite illustrations of is uh, what we've learned about what classically we think about the interplay between passion, emotion, and reason, how we perceive the world, what we imagine in our imagination. What we've learned in the science, and we've done a lot of this work here at Berkeley, which is that our transient emotions transform how we perceive the world, right? We literally attend to different features of a situation. If you're feeling anxious, you'll just see more threat around you. Emotions guide our memories, the reconstruction of the past. If I'm feeling sad, I will remember the past in sadder terms. And they're just beautiful scenes from the first film of you know, just thinking back to a hockey game or an interaction with, with a parent, just colored in the blue of sadness, right? Emotions bias our, our memories. And in this great scene, 
anxiety is starting to color the imagination of Riley and, and getting her to think about catastrophic things and threats and dangers and perils. And what Joy wants to do is come back in and shape uh, the imagination. So this is a, one of the many ways in which these two films have really shed light on how emotions guide thought. And then the third really poignant sort of revelation of the scene that really builds on the science, when I went in and talked to Kelsey Mann about Inside Out 2, the first thing they told me is they said, you know, well, Riley is 13. You know, in the first film, she's 11. There are radical differences between an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old. Hormones are hitting, middle school is arriving, and what we know empirically is developmentally, 13-year-old girls start to feel anxious. Ah, I'm anxiety. Where can I put my stuff? And that's why anxiety becomes the star of the film. And I think uh, it teaches us a lot about how to humanize that, that experience, to know it's part of development. We become anxious. Val and her friends like us now, but if we don't make the team, will they like us tomorrow? In this particular scene, it's like, well, anxiety leads us to catastrophize and to overestimate perils and risks. Wait, what was that? What was what? We got a look. I don't like this. What? You're paranoid. I never miss a look. <laughs> Enhance 224, 176. Track right, <laughs> zoom in, right there. So? She's hiding something. But what? What is she doing? She's looking at our look. No, <laughs> it's much more than that. She looks the same to me. Overlay and compare. See, Riley then, Riley now, Riley then, Riley now. <gasps> oh, it's so oh, obvious. But what does it mean? She knows we're hiding something. What is happening right now? I don't know. I don't know. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> 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 Is it gonna be our coach next year? Please. Yeah, this is an incredible scene. It's one of my favorites. I think there are a couple of lessons here. Uh, one is about disgust. Um, and Paul Rosen at the University of Pennsylvania, you know, in 1996, and then on onward, and then with his collaborator Jonathan Haidt, they were really interested in uh, the idea that emotions uh, are really moral. They're about our social lives, right? And that's actually a radical idea in Western thought. Most of Western thought has felt that emotions are disruptive and dysfunctional and irrational and immoral, right? And Rosen and Haidt and then our lab and others have come along and said, actually, our emotions um, guide us to attend to and act in response to events that have a moral significance that are about right and wrong or character, right? You think about anger as one illustration. That's anger. He cares very deeply about things being fair. So that's how you want to When we feel anger, even though it feels irrational, it leads us to take care of injustices in the world and brings about a lot of social change, which Berkeley is well known for. And then Rosin and Haidt started to study so disgust. Disgust begins in our evolution about Bad tasting Dangerous things. Smell people. Hold on, what is that? This is disgust. She basically keeps Riley from being poisoned. And then as we develop, it becomes more about our social lives. Does somebody say something offensive or judge us in appropriate ways and we feel disgusted by them? Does a politician use rhetoric that feels repulsive to us? Moral disgust. This scene in, in Inside Out 2 is one of my favorites because this is what 13 year old girls do is they're like projecting into other girls' minds and they're like, is she judging me? I'm disgusted by that. The second really uh, science-based revelation in this scene, and I almost feel like it's, uh, they're playing a joke upon <laughs> what I talked to them about for the 14 years of the two films, is all the facial musculature and emotion. Riley then, Riley now, Riley then, Riley now. Oh, it's so I gave them tutorials on the facial musculature. There are 30 muscles, muscles under the surface of the skin that combine in different ways to, to express emotion. And that's what this is about, is like, does, does you know, the little subtle movements of the young girl's facial muscles, the corrugator moving up and down, which would come with sort of judgment versus sympathy, um, and that's 
what disgust does in the scene is slows it down like scientists do, figures out what the meaning of those subtle microexpressions is. There's a scientific truth to this that the muscles tell us something about what people feel. Uh, and then there's a, a kind of an artistic experiential truth, which is, wow, our 13-year-olds sensitive to the judgments and expressive behaviors of their peers, right? And that's what the film is making light of, and, and it's a real struggle. Maybe when I make the team, I can join Team Redhead too! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> okay, who's this guy? What's your name, big fella? That's embarrassment. He's not really big on eye contact or uh, like good talking, but he's a really sweet guy. Well, welcome to headquarters, embarrassment. Ooh. Oh, we're doing a fit. No, oh, no, <gasps> going high. Oh, <laughs> you got a real sweaty palm there, buddy. Ah. <laughs> uh, um. Well, this one's really personally significant to me uh, because um, the progression of Inside Out and Inside Out Two in fascinating ways follows the progression of the science of emotion that I've been part of. And Inside Out has five emotions, anger, disgust, sadness, fear, and joy. And those were the five emotions that the science of emotion around the world had really studied for 20 to 30 years. And then uh, when I was a postdoc, I was coding people when they're startled. And when you get startled unexpectedly, boom, um, you feel like you lose control and, you've, and you get embarrassed. A lot of people get embarrassed. And I was doing the frame-by-frame -frame analysis of that behavior and I was like, wow, that embarrassment display has the features of universal, universal facial expressions of emotion. It has a pattern to it, distinct muscle movements. You see it in other cultures. And, and I devoted an early part of my career to making that case. And you see it in this scene that our wonderful friend embarrassment does a lot of the nonverbal gestures of embarrassment, gaze aversion, turning away, blushing. The blush is fascinating. A lot of species blush, facial redden to kind of trigger cooperation in people or, or individuals oh, around them. No, oh, no, going high. Oh. Embarrassment coming into Inside Out 2 fits because that's what science has learned. Well, there are these five emotions, but yeah, there's embarrassment. It has this characteristic display. A central message of Inside Out 2 is it's okay to feel uncomfortable emotions, anxiety, envy, right? I talked to Kelsey Mann and the team, like envy, yeah, there's one version of envy that is like the sin in some sense. It, it leads you to undermine other people's work, but there's another version of envy, benign envy, where we want what other people have, and then we think, what am I going to do to aspire to that, to achieve that, right? And I work hard. Good news. Uh, so a central lesson of Inside Out, too, is be to embrace the hard emotions, because that's part of development. I think it's most poignant in the panic attack scene, where, you know, Riley has this panic attack and, and starts to settle into it and feel calm through accepting, which we know to be true scientifically. Embarrassment follows scenes or accompanies scenes like Riley here where you're making all kinds of social mistakes, you know, and you're, you're being too friendly, you're doing awkward things, and, and, and you get embarrassment. And I think the reason we look at the character of embarrassment in the film, and it warms our heart, and it makes us, you know, appreciate embarrassment because of its, its oversized, and yet it wants to hide like the experience, is because embarrassment evolved and there's a lot of good science on this to make other people like you, to make people forgive you, to make people trust you because you feel embarrassed and mortified at mistakes you make and you're telling other people, I won't make that mistake again. And the film, I, I think, you know, teenagers, they feel embarrassed about being so embarrassed about life. You know, just everything about being a 13 year old is embarrassing, your body and your clothes and what other people think of you. Ah. And, and that's just part of being a 13-year-old, and I hope it humanizes those emotions of that age. Own emotions, as you watch this film, and you're laughing, and you know, feeling moved, maybe you tear up, and, and I think it will be associated with the scenes where 
you realize that the artists, the filmmakers are really revealing the moral beauty of all of our passions, how we need anxiety in certain ways or envy or embarrassment or anger, right? How funny they are and it gives you this lighthearted view of human nature uh, and how, like the science of emotion says, um, we shouldn't be condemning of our emotions, right? They are part of human nature. Instead, we should embrace them. And I think uh, in this era of emotional struggles worldwide, what a good lesson for us to be thinking about is just accepting these rich veins of human nature.